Now that we understand how to collect and interpret our data, it's time to analyze the relationships that exist between our variables. By deriving equations from these mathematical and graphical relationships, we can predict motion. When you graph two variables together in a lab setting, you'll see four common relationships formed. The first graph is a nice straight line. We call this relationship a direct relationship. As x goes up, y goes up at a constant rate. In order to derive equations from the data that we've graphed here, we need to linearize the graph. Linearizing means straightening out the graph into a nice straight line, giving us a slope-intercept form equation. This is accomplished by altering or manipulating the x or the y variables. In this case, since it's already a straight line, we straighten it by doing nothing. We can directly derive the equation of this relationship from this graph. This next graph starts to slope upwards. As x increases, y increases at a greater rate as time goes on. We call this a quadratic relationship or exponential relationship. We straighten this relationship by squaring all x values. So you would describe this as x squared. If you keep your algebra in mind, you'll remember that a quadratic equation has a degree of 2. And the graph to the left is half of a parabola, which a quadratic equation will graph. This graph is called an inverse relationship. As x increases, y decreases. They move in inverse ways. To straighten this graph, invert all x values. You can either substitute all of the x values in for the formula 1 divided by x, or use the inverse button on your calculator. This exponential graph most resembles a square root graph. It's kind of a sideways parabola. To straighten this graph, square all y values. Although we'll be using software to calculate the slope, the unit that we derive from our two variables and the meaning of that unit is the springboard into each new unit. To find the unit of the slope, divide the unit on the y-axis by the unit of the x-axis. If your x-axis was time in seconds and your y-axis was distance in meters, you would divide meters, your y-axis, by seconds, your x-axis. When we talk about the meaning of the slope or what the slope represents, we're really describing both what we observed in our lab and what we observed on the graph. We put it into words much like I did when I described the different relationships. A simple way to put it into words is to use this basic fill in the blank. For every x-axis unit, the dependent variable increases by the magnitude of the slope and the unit of the dependent variable. So let's break those down and review. Let's use a graph where our x-axis is time in seconds and our y-axis is or distance in meters. The x-axis unit is seconds, so for every second, the dependent variable. The dependent variable is always graphed on the y-axis, so that's distance. For every second, the distance increases by the magnitude of the slope. That's the number that will be calculated by the software. So let's say the slope is 4. For every second, the distance increases by 4 and the unit of the dependent variable. Well, the dependent variables are y-axis, which is meters. So put it all together. For every second, the distance increases by 4 seconds. Sorry, 4 meters. If you were ever given data graphed without given the unit for the slope, but just the magnitude. So the slope is 5, but 5 what? Every value needs to have a unit in physics. We're dealing with real-world scenarios. So we need to derive what our variable will be. We look at our y-axis and our 
x-axis. We look at their units. Slope is rise over run. Rise is our y-axis. Run is our x-axis. So that's how we get y over x. That means that the slope of this line isn't just 5. It's 5 meters per second. It's a rate of change where we look at distance over time. So if we had to put it into words and explain what this slope represents, we would say for every second, the position or distance increases by 5 meters. Most software will calculate and give you the y-intercept of your graph. The real challenge is understanding the unit and meaning of your y-intercept. To find the unit of the y-intercept, just look at the unit for the dependent variable. We all know the dependent variable is graphed on the y-axis, so it makes sense that we would look there for our unit of the y-intercept. In order to describe the y-intercept in words, to give it its meaning, we have another simple formula to fill in the initial dependent variable of the object. So if we looked at a position versus time graph, where position is on the y-axis, we would say the initial position. It's the starting place. If you're ever given a graph that tells you your y-intercept, but does not give you the unit for that y-intercept, simply look at the y-axis in front of you. The unit of the y-axis is in meters, so my y-intercept isn't just 10, it's 10 meters. What this represents, or the meaning of the y-intercept, is the initial position of the object. That is where the object started moving. Now that we know how to find our y-intercept, how to find our slope, how to find the variables and units connected to both of them, it's time to put them all together in a more useful form. We linearize our graphs so that we can put all equations into slope-intercept form, a very commonly understood equation format. Slope-intercept form represents a straight line on a graph. Its general form is y equals mx plus b. All four variables that we see here, y, m, x, and b, will be replaced with values or the name of the variable represented on that particular axis. When we look at our y in our equation, that represents the y axis, which is our dependent variable since we graphed our dependent variable on the y axis. The slope with both the magnitude and the unit is m x represents the variable of the x-axis. Since we graphed the independent variable on the x-axis, whatever our independent variable is, is our x in our equation. b is our y-intercept with both magnitude and unit. Notice in this equation that our x is in parentheses. That's a very important little tip that you can throw in to help the equation seem a little easier to read. The mathematical equation only describes the scenario of the lab environment. However, if we apply our understanding of variables and units, we can create a general equation that will allow us to apply what we've understood about this specific lab to new situations. Our two variables, position and time, would stay in this case. So our x and y are going to stay. However, we're going to use the units of our slope and y-intercept to replace them with the appropriate variables. We'll keep in time with the y equals mx plus b format. Position remains position. Meters per second. This would be a new variable that, or new unit that we have derived. Meters per second is distance over time, which is velocity. Time is going to remain time. Keep it in the parentheses. The y-intercept, which is positive 2 meters in this case, we know has a meaning of being the initial dependent variable. The dependent variable is position, so our y-intercept represents the initial position. The mathematical equation would be Position equals 1.5 meters per second times time plus 2 meters. The general equation is position equals velocity times time plus initial position. 
you can use the mathematical equation to predict motion relative to the lab scenario. You can use the general equation or a derivation of the general equation to predict motion in any new situation. Let's practice and apply what we just did. When we're writing a mathematical equation, we're going to look at the y equals mx plus b format. y represents my y axis, the variable of my y axis, which is position. m is my slope. The slope up there says 5, but we need to derive our unit. So we take the unit of the y axis divided by the unit of the x axis, giving us 5 meters per second. y equals mx. x is going to be the variable of our x axis, in this case, clock time or time. Put it in parentheses to keep the mathematical and eventually general equation organized. Y equals MX plus B is the last one. B is our Y intercept. We know here our Y intercept is 10, but we need the unit. In case the unit isn't given to us, look at the unit of your Y axis. The Y axis is position in meters. So we have 10 meters. The mathematical equation here is position equals 5 meters per second times clock time plus 10. So you could plug in a value for position to calculate clock time. You could put a value, value in for clock time, calculate position. To turn this into a general equation, we just need to keep our two variables the same and replace the values, the slope and the y-intercept, with the appropriate variables based on their units. So position remains position. Meters per second which again is a change of distance over time or position over time. That's velocity. That's a new variable we'll be talking about. Clock time remains clock time. It's already a variable. The y-intercept re represents the initial or starting dependent variable. Our dependent variable's position, so 10 meters, is replaced in the general equation with initial position. From data to graph to mathematical equation to general equation, that's how we kick off every unit.